Hello, I am Dr. Raglan, Dean of Zombie Hunter University and Professor of the Scientific Minimalist Theory of Dead Frontier. Today's lecture is an introduction to weapons. We will discuss weapons categories, weapons requirements, and weapon effectiveness. The information will be basic, useful to beginning students only. To begin with, Dead Frontier weapons fall into two categories. One, looting weapons, which are used to pick off one or two zombies at a time. Two, grinding weapons, which are used to fend off swarms of zombies. Looting weapons include melee, pistols, and rifles. These weapons tend to fire or strike slowly, delivering maximum impact with a single blow or shot to a single zombie. These weapons tend to be effective when searching for loot. Grinding weapons include shotguns, chainsaws, machine guns, and grenade launchers. These weapons tend to fire or strike quickly, spreading their damage among several zombies. Grinding weapons tend to be effective for defending oneself from an aggro swarm or for killing zombies to earn experience. To succeed on the streets of Fairview, students will need both looting and grinding weapons. The exact combination depends on personal preference, aptitude, and goals. Earning experience allows students to level up and acquire stat and proficiency points that will help them survive. This leads to our next subject, weapon requirements. Proficiency requirements are straightforward. A student needs 30 proficiency points to equip a 30 proficiency weapon. Stat requirements are less obvious. What is the difference between high critical chance and very high critical chance? Or between very high accuracy, high accuracy, and average accuracy? In a nutshell, these distinctions indicate how many stat points are necessary to optimize a weapon. There are four stats that affect weapon use, accuracy, critical hit, reloading, and in some cases, strength. Only strength is a necessity. If a weapon has a strength requirement, a student must have at least that much strength to equip the weapon. In the case of all other stats, a weapon can be equipped without the proper stat points. It simply will not work as well as it should. Of the three weapon-oriented stats, reloading will continue to improve as long as points are added until the maximum of 124 is reached. The only cutoff is personal preference. Accuracy and critical hit have some instances in which there is a threshold over which additional points will not increase performance. Knowing those cutoff points will tell students how many points to add in each stat category. Next, weapon effectiveness. Weapon effectiveness should be calculated by five standards. 1. Damage per hit. 2. Damage per second. 3. Damage per clip. 4. Knockback. 5. Firing speed. Damage per hit is most important when targeting individuals. The fewer hits to kill a target, the less likely a weapon is to attract nearby zombies. Damage per second is more important for grinding weapons spraying hundreds of bullets into crowds, though it is also a factor when fighting a boss zombie. When judging a looting weapon, which needs to kill individual zombies quickly and quietly, consider how well it handles the common zombies in the area where you are looting. If a weapon can kill all common zombies in a zone with one or two hits, it is very effective. It may take more hits, four or five or whatever, to kill stronger mutated zombies, but this is less important because they appear less frequently. However, this is where damage per clip becomes important. If a single clip is not enough to kill a zombie, or in some cases a pack of zombies, the weapon will pause to reload, creating a short window of vulnerability. Therefore, it is advantageous for beginning students with slow reloading speed to use weapons that deliver maximum damage per clip. As reloading speed increases, damage per clip becomes less important. When deciding whether a grinding weapon is effective, students of scientific minimalism should ask three questions. How much damage per second does it provide? How much knockback does it provide? How much damage per clip does it provide? In order to avoid bogging this and subsequent lectures down, I will avoid delving into the math, which can get very convoluted. Interested students may examine our weapon effectiveness charts at Zombie Hunter University. The website URL is zombiehunterphd.com. While on the subject of weapon effectiveness, I want to mention the weapon proficiency paradox, which simply stated is this, bigger is not always better. Though weapons with higher proficiency requirements are usually better, there are exceptions. Let's cite one simple example. 
The 30 proficiency M24 rifle delivers more damage per hit than the 20 proficiency SL8 rifle. This sounds like an improvement. However, the M24 has an ammo capacity of only 5 rounds. The SL8 holds 30 rounds. Unless a student has maximized reloading speed, the M24's performance will be seriously impaired compared to the SL8. We will explore more examples in subsequent lectures. For the time being, we advise students to learn the details of each new weapon before acquiring it. Ask yourself such questions as, does it hold less ammunition? Does it have a faster or slower firing rate? Does it provide more or less damage per hit? Does it provide more or less damage per second? Before wrapping up, I want to add a brief word about special weapons. The scientific minimalist school of thought tends to eschew special weapons, which include Dusk Gear, which is available only to students who earn admittance to the Dusk Shop. Limited Edition Weapons, which were on sale for only a short period of time. And Unique Weapons, which cannot be looted on the streets of Fairview, but are available only in the Credit Shop. Our reasoning for this is that we advocate using the minimum necessary weapon that will do the job. Special Weapons have their uses, but their expense tends to put them out of reach for undergraduate students. That concludes today's lecture. We will resume with subsequent lectures on specific weapon types, which will delve into some of the details we have avoided today. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.